Hi everybody, uh, today we're going to have a look at changing a spare wheel uh, on a California. This would apply to any transporter you've got, obviously we're using an ocean behind us here uh, so I can show you where the tools are and things like that for it. But a couple of people have asked about this in the past uh, so I thought it's probably about time we actually showed you uh, how it's done. Uh, now a couple of caveats, one I'm not a trained technician uh, so I apologise in advance if I'm telling anybody that uh, do it wrong but this is how I would do it. I have changed spare wheels in the past, I've had to do them on the side of the road as well so I've got a little bit of experience of doing it. I'm going to talk you through how I would do it, how I would uh, change the spare wheel, where all the parts are. Obviously I'm using an Ocean that's behind me uh, which has a spare wheel fitted. Uh, if your vehicle's got 18 inch alloy wheels for example from the factory uh, then it will not have a spare wheel uh, underneath the vehicle uh, you'll have a tyre inflation kit uh, and that's different and maybe we'll do a, a video on how that works uh, in a few weeks time or something we'll have a look at that and see if we've got one uh, that, we can, uh, that we can use and effectively show you how that works so, uh, but obviously we're looking today at actually how you would go about and change that spare wheel. Now before we start, most people who have a vehicle, whatever vehicle you've got, any age of vehicle you've got, you've probably got breakdown assistance that's with it. Uh, so my first thing that I will say to everybody is if you're somewhere where somebody can come out to you, let somebody else do this for you. Uh, that's one of the reasons why you pay this breakdown service, so you've got a puncher, you're on a motorway, uh, you're at a service station, wherever you might be, first thing to do phone your breakdown and let somebody who's professional to come in and do this for you. Um, I can't emphasize enough how dangerous it can be, uh, things like motorways, main roads and things like that. You must always remember safety is the first thing that you need to think about. Plus, if you're not 100% confident about what you're doing, make sure you phone somebody. So today's thing really is, is about if you, for example, got a puncher on a campsite, if you're, I don't know, in the Scottish Highlands, for example, uh, you're gonna be waiting a long time probably for somebody to come and uh, help you out. Very important to think about your own safety uh, when you're doing this. Uh, anybody will know if you've ever broken down on a main road somewhere, uh, it can be quite frightening breaking down on that main road. So you certainly don't wanna be outside trying to change a tire and things like that. You need to get yourself out to the vehicle, get yourself to safety somewhere away from the vehicle, uh, phone your breakdown, and get them to come through. Uh, so I said that to you now, as I said, most people have got a breakdown cover. That's the first thing I would do. But today's video is to show you where things are kept, so you know where things are as well. So let's have a look at the toolkit. Let's show you where those things are. So a couple of things. One, your spare wheel is actually located under the vehicle. Uh, so we'll have a look at that in a moment. Uh, but the first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need your toolkit. Uh, and your toolkit's located at the back of the chair under here. Uh, so to get to that toolkit, depending on which model you've got, uh, you're gonna need to move this out the way, or at least, if nothing else, uh, on the 6.1, it's quite handy. You can just pop it up so it gives you access to here. And then on here, you've got two screws. And pull that out. So in here, these are things that you're going to need. So you've got your wheel brace here, and in the end of the wheel brace uh, is a screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver one side, and the other side just a normal one. As I said, that normally lives in the end of in the end of there for, for, for storage place but obviously we're going to take that out because we're going to need uh, your wheel brace that's there you've got your jack uh, and your jack looks like so uh, and it gives you a little description on the side of it on here how to do it and i'm going to sort you through some of these bits uh, that's with it on the vehicle at the moment in a second but that's your your jack and then should you ever need it uh, you also have in there as well as standards a towing eye, uh, so that will be something that would be located on the front of your vehicle to allow the vehicle to be towed. Again, most people you wouldn't have any use for that. Um, and then finally, here uh, is we have a little hook, and this is for taking the dust caps off. And I'm just going to get the locking wheel bolt as well. Uh, obviously most of these vehicles come with locking wheel bolts so you'll need your locking wheel bolt. Uh, now this obviously may for example might be on here depending on who, where you got your vehicle from. With us ourselves here at Liverpool we've been having these little um, uh, locking wheel bolt bags produced. I've just got that on our contact details on the other side um, that's in here and basically they're nice and bright so you can't miss it. That's the idea because locking wheel bolts do tend to go walky sometimes and you lose them and not sure what they're for so we put them in a bag so you can't miss it uh, and that's what your locking wheel bolt looks like so you can look into there 
obviously that marries up with some bolts that's on the vehicle which we'll have a look at in a moment uh, whenever you get a new vehicle if you buy a used one for example that's in there rather than a new one or a new one whatever you buy uh, always make sure you know where your lock and wheel bolt is because uh, it's quite important you're going to need that and the one time you're going to need it um, uh, you know for example if you change a wheel or something like that if you haven't got it uh, you can imagine that causes problems so my advice when you're doing this always is get your spare wheel out first so you've now got both wheels next to it uh, we haven't done that today and the reason for that is because with the vehicle up a little bit I can show you better under the vehicle how the spare wheel is because uh, you imagine it's not a great deal of space that's there so um, so please always don't get your spare wheel out when you're at this stage now um, we're just doing it so we can show you better uh, how it works get your spare wheel out before you jack everything up uh, and get it out from underneath your vehicle uh, and then obviously then you can put it on uh, from there now there's a few things that I carry with me all of the time, uh, not something this size by the way <laughs> to add, but I normally carry something when I'm away or even in the back of my vehicle, uh, something that I can kneel on. Um, I've normally got on my other vehicle actually, I've got the similar thing here but it's about that big of it. Uh, this was actually an off cut of something off my truck that was in there so I'm, just, I'm using this today because it was in the back of my vehicle. But it's really handy I think whenever you're away, have something you can kneel on. Even if you're on a campsite and you're trying to get underneath your vehicle to look at a water pipe or something like that, it's always handy to have something on your knees anyway rather than going on the floor. Uh, and then the other thing as well is always worth I keep in the bag as well is to keep some of these gloves. These are what we use in our workshop but you can get uh, white ones as well. You've probably seen them, uh, medical ones and blue ones and different coloured ones that's in there. Uh, these are really handy because obviously you're going to get your hands dirty doing this whichever way. So today we're going to do this one. So if you imagine this for example is flat uh, for one reason or another um, it's very important that your vehicle is level um, now i know this might not look level because the ground run but i've used the level in the display panel here to show me that the vehicle is actually level and that's obviously because we're going to jack the vehicle up so first things first before we do anything else is take all these um, nuts off so i said basically if you see that you just pop it in then just give it a pull and behind one of these is going to be it's going to be one which looks like that, which is your locking wheel bolt. Uh, so that, put it in there, and it should lock into place that's on there. So, obviously we've got five studs that are around here, and one of them is the locking wheel bolt, and each of the wheels will have a locking wheel bolt that's on there. Obviously, for obvious reasons, make sure your handbrake is on before you do anything else now, to make sure the vehicle is level and it's not going anywhere. Uh, if you're not sure, give it a bit of a push, make sure it's definitely secure and it's not going uh, anywhere that's with it uh, and the very first thing to, we need to do is loosen those bolts off and the reason for that is, is because once the, once the vehicle's in the air and this is off the, off the uh, surface if you try and put some downward force and on these bolts that's on here as well the wheel will just spin. Mm -hmm. 